We've been talking about cardiac output, and so far we've focused mostly about uh, the stroke volume and that part of cardiac output. But I'd like to talk a little bit about heart rate and the regulation of heart rate. Um, to start off with, let's talk about how the body's goal is to maintain your blood pressure and the delivery of your blood within those homeostatic parameters. So this is a classic negative feedback loop. When your blood pressure goes too low, there are mechanisms that can uh, detect that the blood pressure is too low. Those mechanisms send the information to a central processing area that recognizes, uh oh, blood pressure is too low, and then sends out commands that are designed to raise blood pressure. Uh, equally, if blood pressure gets too high, these same systems detect that blood pressure is too high. They send a signal to the central mechanism who will send back commands that are designed to bring the blood pressure back down into the normal range. Well, when we're talking about blood pressure, who's busy measuring that? And the answer is uh, special mechanoreceptor cells that are called baroreceptors. The baroreceptors, you already learned them back when we were talking about uh, the sensory nervous system. The baroreceptors are mechanoreceptors that fire off an action to potential. The frequency at which they send out an action potential is proportional to the amount that they are stretched. They sit in the walls of the arteries right here at the aortic arch and at the aortic sinus and up here at the carotid sinus, which is up here. And if they are stretched a lot, they fire off frequent action potentials. If they're stretched a little bit, action potentials that are less frequent, if they're not being stretched at all, they send out no action potentials, okay? So those are going to be our sensory receptor cells for blood pressure. In the same vicinity, there are chemoreceptor cells that also regulate heart rate. Um, we are going to be, but those chemoreceptor cells have a stronger effect on respiratory rate or how quickly the patient is breathing. So you can see right here in the aortic bodies, very close to uh, the aortic uh, sinuses and the carotid body, there are our chemoreceptor cells. And those chemoreceptor cells are tasting the quality of the plasma, particularly tasting for any uh, carbon dioxide or hydrogen ions that are in the plasma, and that will cause them to fire off action potentials. Where are they sending those action potentials to? They're sending those action potentials to the medulla oblongata. And a part of the medulla oblongata, one of the parts of the brainstem, the medulla oblongata is responsible for processing uh, those signals, for gaining meaning from those signals, and then deciding what should happen. So let's go back to a definition of heart rate. Heart rate is how many times per minute the heart contracts and sends out a pulse of blood, okay? The pulse is actually a surge of pressure in an artery. Infants have a very rapid heart rate. Uh, this would be a relatively normal heart rate for an average young adult female. Uh, Young adult males tend to have a slower heart rate, partly because they have a larger heart for their height. It is uh, considered normal for heart rate to rise again in the elderly and for elderly people to have a higher resting heart rate. However, even though that is normal in the fact that it's typical, it is not healthy. It generally means a decline in stroke volume in these older people either because their heart is no longer in condition, they're not exercising, or it could be because their heart is starting to slowly fail. I want you to know these two words, tachycardia and bradycardia. Tachycardia is a resting heart rate in adults that is way too fast. Bradycardia or bradycardia is a resting adult heart rate that is too slow. So tachy, too fast, bratty, too slow. Uh, tachycardia is a, a resting adult heart rate above 100 beats per minute. 
If there is nothing slowing down your sinoatrial node, your sinoatrial node's uh, normal rate would be about 100 beats per minute. The reason that your heart rate is slower than 100 beats per minute generally is because the sinoatrial node is receiving signals from the medulla oblongata telling it to slow down. So uh, that is called uh, that is called vagal tone. And usually your vagus nerve uh, contains messages from your medulla oblongata saying to the sinoatrial node, slow down. So if a person's adult resting heart rate is 100 beats per minute or above, that is considered a tachycardia. Patients with very um, high blood pressure can have dramatic tachycardias because with a dramatically increased afterload, their stroke volume goes so small that their heart tries to compensate for the tiny little stroke volume by dramatically increasing heart rate. Bradycardia is a resting adult heart rate lower than 60 beats per minute. Um, endurance athletes um, generally can have a resting heart rate uh, below 60 beats per minute. Um, we are not concerned if an athlete has a heart rate less than 60 beats per minute only if your general couch potato had a heart rate lower than that. The reason that your heart rate is what it is is largely because it's being regu regulated by the autonomic nervous system. And we did a segment on the autonomic nervous system before, um, uh, before the second exam. Uh, the commands being sent out by the autonomic nervous system uh, are being are originating in a part of the medulla oblongata that is called the cardiovascular center. Well, that's not very creative, is it? Okay. Um, uh, when the medulla oblongata wants to increase heart rate or increase how hard your heart is beating, which means the, increasing the ejection fraction, it will send out more um, commands through the sympathetic nervous system, and it will send out fewer commands through the parasympathetic nervous system. If your medulla oblongata wants to slow your heart rate, it will decrease commands sent out through the sympathetic nervous system and increase the amount coming out through the parasympathetic nervous system. More commands through the parasympathetic nervous system speed up the heart and cause it to have a higher ejection fraction more commands through the parasympathetic nervous system would cause the heart to slow down. And together, you can consider the parasympathetic nervous system a little bit like stepping on the brake and the sympathetic nervous system as like stepping on the gas. Now, the baroreceptors are detecting changes in blood pressure. We'll be mostly talking about that story. Simultaneously, the chemoreceptors are also detecting the quality of your plasma. If you are exercising really hard, then your, um, the amount of CO2 in your blood will go up. That will cause the amount of acid in your blood to go up. And those changes also will be read by your medulla oblongata as a requirement for a faster, stronger heartbeat. But we'll be talking about the chemoreceptors when we get to the story about the respiratory system. Right now, we're going to be just talking about baroreceptors. Okay. So remember the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is going to cause your heart to beat harder and faster. Now the sympathetic nervous system has, has nerves that go directly to the SA node, making it depolarize more times per minute to the AV node, also causing it to uh, speed up its, its transmission of that action potential. But the sympathetic nervous system does something the parasympathetic nervous system does not. The sympathetic nervous system also speaks directly to the heart muscle, particularly of the ventricle. And in that way, the sympathetic nervous system can decrease, or I'm sorry, it can increase the ejection fraction increasing the stroke volume for every given preload. It is correct to say that the sympathetic nervous system by itself is a positive inotropic factor. 
Okay? It is positive chronotropic in that it makes the heart beat faster, positive inotrope in that it makes it beat harder. Now, this is important. The parasympathetic nervous system is a negative chronotrope, but it has no inotropic effect. The parasympathetic nervous system has no inotropic effect. Cardiac output is going to peak at a heart rate above, at about 160 to 180 beats per minute. When heart rate goes above that, cardiac output does not increase anymore. Why would that be? The reason is that it's at about 160 to 180 beats per minute that there is adequate time for the atria to fill up the ventricles. If the, if the heart, if the ventricles are contracting faster than 180 beats per minute, they cannot fill adequately. So their end diastolic volume goes down, so their ejection fraction goes down, so their stroke volume goes down. So above about 180 beats per minute, whatever you would gain from a faster heartbeat, you lose in a smaller stroke volume. When people have got incredibly high stroke uh, heart rates, like 200, 220 beats per minute, they actually have a very poor cardiac output and, um, and they will start to lose consciousness even though their heart is working like a son of a gun. The parasympathetic nervous system has nerves to the SA node and the AV node, and that's how it can slow down the heart, but it does not speak to the myocardium. So it has a negative chronotropic effect it does not have an inotropic effect. If we want their, the heart to cool out and not beat so hard, the way we do that is by withdrawing the sympathetic stimulation. So what's going on constantly is as if your uh, medulla oblongata is driving the heart with one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas. If it wants the heart to beat more quickly, it takes its foot off the brake, puts its foot on the gas. If it wants it to beat more slowly, puts its foot on the brake, kind of takes its foot off the gas. But actually all the time, there's a little bit of parasympathetic and sympathetic. In order to decrease ejection fraction to sort of make the heart not beat so hard, uh, the only thing that will do that is decreasing sympathetic stimulation, less gap, gas pedal. And in general, all of us have what's called vagal tone, which means that there's this constant background firing of our parasympathetic nervous system that's decreasing what the SA node would normally want to do. It has an intrinsic rate of about 100 beats per minute. And it's because we always have a little bit of, sympath of parasympathetic stimulation that our heart beats more slowly. Now, the higher brain centers can also uh, affect your heart rate. If you suddenly see a cop car behind you on the freeway with its lights on, your heart beats faster, that has nothing to do with the central mechanism. It is because your cerebral cortex also can think thoughts that will cause there to be more sympathetic or more parasympathetic stimulation. In addition, our proprioceptors that are measuring how much our body is moving are also uh, sending input to the medulla oblongata cardiac centers. And if your cardiac center goes, wow, our arms and legs are moving like a sun gun, I guess we're exercising, then that by itself will also increase heart rate and increase ejection fraction uh, through uh, sympathetic commands coming from the medulla oblongata, right? Remember, when pressure goes too low, the signal rate from those baroreceptors in the periphery will go down, and then your cardiac center, the medulla oblongata, will interpret that as, wow, my blood pressure is too low. I better increase sympathetic stimulation to make the heart rate go up um, by increasing um, and also increasing ejection fraction, making the heart beat harder and vice versa. Alrighty. So when the baroreceptors are sensing high blood pressure, they fire off a fast signal rate. The medulla oblongata will go, what the heck? Why is my blood pressure so high? And will respond by taking its foot off the gas, less sympathetic stimulation, 
putting his foot on the brake, more parasympathetic stimulation. When blood pressure is too low, the signal rate from these baroreceptors will be very slow or non-existent. The medulla oblongata will interpret that as well. My blood pressure is too low. I better step on the gas, more sympathetic stimulation, take my foot off the brake, less parasympathetic stimulation, right? We will start here at the next video.